Okay, what we need to do is put in two canvas elements eventually, but the first canvas element is going to be a UI text, and we're going to call this our, rename this to uh, lap time. And this lap time is going to hold our timer, which we were debug.logging into our console. So we're going to, it's going to look something like this. So I don't know, we might be on 2.5 2 seconds. When we go to game view, we can preview where this is going to position itself. At the moment, it's just in the center of the screen. So first thing we need to do is click on the rect transform middle center tool here. And we are going to position it top left. We're also going to hold shift and alt and click on the top left. So when you click shift it moves its pivot point to the top left of the object and when I hold alt it actually moves the object to the top left as well. Now it's right up in the top left corner and remember we're in game view so this is what we'll see when we actually push play. We want to just give it a bit of padding up there so I'm going to just drag that X off a little bit and bring it down on the Y as well. Last thing I'll do is change the font to about 25 so it's nice and big so we can see it. Now how do we change that text? Well it's quite easy. We go back to the car and our racer script. Inside of our racer script we need to create a variable an empty variable, or well, it's not going to be empty for long, but we're going to need to make a placeholder variable to put this lap time canvas text element into, so then we can control it. So this is how we do it. We go public, and we it's going to be a type of uh, Unity, whoops, Unity Engine.UI.Text, and we're going to call it our lap uh, we'll just call it lap or, or current, yeah we'll call it L time capital L alright, if we come back to Unity, you'll see that oops, did I save it? No, little asterisk, remember to save your script before you come back to Unity when we come back to Unity, you'll notice that now we have an L time variable space and it's set to none at the moment so all we need to do now is drag that lap time and put it into that none box. And now we know that L time is actually going to be this, this component here and we can now control the text and any of its attributes from the inspector. So let's go down to here and instead of the debug, remember we were debugging the time, we want to actually put that lap time variable into the L time text. So it comes up here. So let's just hide this for a second and let's go l time dot text equals the lap time now because this is a number and this needs to be in the format of a string we need to convert this number or integer or float actually it's a float into a string so we just go dot to string and open close bracket Let's see what this looks like now. When we play, uh, we've got to wait for it to compile. When we play, we're going to go through it. And here is our... There's our timer. But you, you notice that we're, there are, I forget, about six or seven decimal places. We only want two decimal places. The easy way to do that is to pass into the two string. Um, this F2 float2 that stands for I assume and that will round the float to two decimal places so let's play it again and there we have it so now we got our timer we could put a word in front of this so we could say uh, time and then a space 
and then plus. So we want to add, make this a little bit wider so we can see. We want to add, what's this window? Put this over here for a second. We want to add the word time in front of, like we have here, like we mocked it up here. And so now if we push play, make sure I save this actually. Now if I push play, and go through, the time stays there. It just simply redraws that with the time every time we loop and go through the update. Now we can get rid of this 250 to start off to as well, because if we just sit there, we don't want a time to be showing because we haven't gone through it yet. So what I did there is I went through the, after I started, I went through the start finish again, you know, thinking about well, how are we going to stop this time now when we do a lap and we come back through the same object, we need to stop that time and, and possibly record it, or well, we know we need to record it because we saw the example from the very first video, the introduction. How do we, how do we go about that? So let's go back to our dot points just to say, just to keep uh, us on track here. We started the timer with the trigger start. We've got the timer basics working in the debug log, which we did down in the console. We've got the canvas set up to display the timer. So that's all done. In our next uh, video, we'll, we'll work out how do we stop the timer using checkpoints.